Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Ministry of Tourism issues operating protocol for transportation operators. More repatriation is underway with 168 nationals to arrive home Friday. And the OECS celebrates 39 years amid unprecedented challenges. The Ministry of Tourism, in collaboration with the Department of Health and Wellness, concluded a series of consultation meetings with taxi and rideshare operators and have outlined the necessary protocols for operation during the phased opening of the tourism sector, which commenced on June 4, 2020. As the destination learns to coexist with COVID-19 and cognizant that there is still a threat of transmission of the virus from regional and international travel, the Ministry of Tourism launched a visual public service announcement on the protocols to be observed by tourism transportation operators. In mitigating the possible spread of COVID-19 into our communities, the following tourism-related health and safety protocols must be observed during the deployment of taxi and rideshare services. Drivers must wear a face mask at all times. The official COVID compliance obtained through the Ministry of Tourism must be displayed when on duty. No shaking of hands. A gentle nod or elbow greet will do. Hand sanitizer should be offered to guests prior to entering the taxi. Electronic methods of payments are encouraged as an alternative to cash transactions. All guests must keep their feet on floor mats and wear a face mask throughout the journey. Drivers should sanitize hands before and after any possible contact. Installing a plexiglass is highly recommended as an added layer of protection. For more information, operators should visit the Ministry of Tourism's website at www.slutourism.govt.lc or call 468-4603 or 468-4628. This information is brought to you by the Ministry of Tourism in collaboration with the Department of Health and Wellness. Securing Lives, Restoring Livelihoods. The sector has welcomed the guidelines. I think that these protocols are very much needed and um, I applaud the Ministry and um, the Minister for ensuring that these things will basically be adhered to and the safety of our drivers are basically what they place most of their priority on. The Ministry of Tourism will be working closely with tourism transportation providers in ensuring that they are equipped to execute their duties in the safest possible manner. Meantime, the Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, has reiterated government's commitment to the tourism industry and its stakeholders. The assurance follows concerns expressed by the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association. Lisa Joseph has that story. In a letter to Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney that was reproduced in the press, President of the SLHTA, Carolyn Chubeskoy, sought an audience with the Prime Minister and other relevant ministers on the reopening of the tourism industry and the associated protocols. According to Chubeskoy, the Ministry of Tourism failed to consult with the SLHTA and its members on the reopening protocols. Tourism Minister Honorable Dominic Fede has, however, refuted this. A statement that suggests that there's a lack of consultation is absolutely unfortunate and I think it goes against the facts or the cr chronology of the events that have taken place because uh, in the last two months we've met with tourism related uh, organizations including the SLHTA uh, and various subsectors 15 times we've met uh, even before the tourism industry was shut down uh, in early March with the hotel sector 
to see exactly where they're at. Uh, we've met with the taxi sector, an important subsector of the industry. Uh, we've met with the board of the SLHTA to unveil our reopening plans. Minister Fede revealed that a nine-member task force commissioned by his ministry has four representatives of the SLHTA, including the President Carlin Chubeskoy and Chief Executive Officer Nurani Aziz. The SLHDA president has suggested that the requirement for visitors to present a negative COVID-19 test result conducted 48 hours before boarding a flight has created a stalemate between the airlines and the destination. Minister Fede says whilst he appreciates the need for hotels to open, government must lead the charge to a safe reopening. We are going through a very difficult time. It's a health crisis that the world has never seen. And so what we have to do is... Uh, when we are contemplating opening, we've got to do so with the health and safety of the St. Lucian people first in mind. Um, and so I think that um, we have indicated to uh, hoteliers and in a more official capacity to the SLHTA um, that, um, you know, we have to ensure that this is done well. Now, the protocols which they spoke of, I think um, we discussed it with the aviation sector. And it is a real fact that we may have to review those protocols. Government, the minister says, has been communicating with the airlines to have robust commercial flights into the island in the shortest possible time. However, government will not be strong-armed into a situation that would endanger the lives of citizens. Um, it clearly shows that the aviation sector does not find the pre-testing protocol to be very practical. But I think that you have to ensure whatever protocol that replaces that should not be done um, in a scurry and it should not be done overnight, but it has to be done in a clinical manner, in a manner that is very calculated and measured. Because you know, Lisa, if we got into the business of reopening and we didn't get it right and we open up our uh, borders to the epicenter of the virus, now the United States, where the numbers, instead of decreasing, are spiraling. And uh, the public health situation seems uh, to be overwhelmed by what is taking place. It would mean, therefore, that the risk is very, very grave. And you're endangering the workers of the industry. You're endangering uh, the taxi drivers. You're endangering the entire population when those workers go back to their communities. Minister Fede says he empathizes with the hoteliers, but now is not the time for anyone to push the panic button for a rush to open. The government, he added, is taking a balanced approach and will soon make an announcement on the revision of the protocols. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. Through the ongoing repatriation process, the government of St. Lucia will on Friday, June 19, 2020, welcome home 168 St. Lucia nationals who are employees of Norwegian Cruise Line. The Department of Health and Wellness has granted permission for the arrival and disembarkation processes of MS Marina at Podcast Trees, following which the vessel will depart St. Lucia. All returning nationals will be screened by Port Health personnel and transferred to a government-operated quarantine facility for a period of 14 days. To date, 660 nationals have been repatriated. This will increase to 784 upon the arrival of the MS Marina on Friday, 20th June. Efforts are ongoing to ensure that stranded nationals in Europe, the Philippines, Dubai, Brazil and Mexico, along with others in North America and the Caribbean region, can be brought home soon. Nationals are reminded to liaise and register with the nearest St. Lucian Embassy and Consulate, along with the Office for Diaspora Affairs. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States OECS on Thursday, 18th June, celebrated OECS Day. The day also marked the 39th anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Bastyr and the 10th anniversary of the Eastern Caribbean Economic Union. Director General of the OECS, His Excellency Dr. Didicus Jules, indicated that member states over the years have faced many challenges, but none like the COVID-19 pandemic. The Director General highlighted that the region's swift, decisive and coherent response to the threat allowed for its proper management. While the pandemic has stalled several initiatives, it has made more apparent why they are necessary. While the revised Treaty of Bastet did not foresee this dynamic, 
its prescription of an economic union upheld by the pillars of free movement of people, free circulation of goods, services, and capital, in fact represents the best solution our current circumstances in a living with COVID world. Our resolve, therefore, at the Commission is to seek the acceleration of the regional integration agenda, both at the OECS and within CARICOM. Just as COVID has forced on us the use of online modalities of learning in education, so too does it necessitate the fast tracking of all protocols, processes, and measures needed to make free trade and free movement of people a seamless reality and a present-day urgency. In that vein, the OECS, in consultation with the relevant ministries, has produced a full suite of harmonized legislation and regulations to facilitate easier and faster trade, especially in agricultural products, in support of its food security agenda. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda and outgoing Chair Honorable Gaston Brown indicated that the region is provided with an opportunity to recommit to accelerating its progress. This is not a time for us to cover. This is not a time for us to buckle. This is a time for us to hold hands tighter and move forward with resolution to embrace the transformational opportunities that the crisis presents. From the emergence of the pandemic, we acted decisively and with a strong degree of cohesion, and today we are all better for it. In fact, the OECS today is considered as one of the most successful regions in the world in terms of its success in containing COVID. And this success was not due because of any superior resource endowment. It was primarily as a consequence of our competence and our commitment to protect our people. And that is certainly one of the areas of success that we ought to celebrate. And it shows how we could literally deal with the most difficult of challenges when we act together. Incoming Chair of the OECS and Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, said COVID-19 has taught many lessons, creating the need for urgent action in areas such as food security, healthcare, and ICT. Among the many lessons we should have learned from the last few months are the issue of dealing with digital divide in our societies. It has become clearer that our people must have connectivity to access government services, financial services, educational services, and general information pertaining to their well-being. Lining up for services in this emerging era of social distancing equates to the inefficiency I alluded to earlier that can lead to further inequality. Digital access is fast becoming a right in this new economy. Connectivity shall be the driver of equality in our region. The policy approach to this sector must evolve in considering the new realities, and we will do well to deepen our coordination and collaboration on this issue. That was incoming chair of the OECS and prime minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. The director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, has called on countries to work together to strengthen the health response within the territories and across frontiers in order to contain the spread of COVID-19 cases among migrant and vulnerable populations in border areas. The call comes as the region continues to record increasing cases of COVID-19. Anisia Antoine reports. The number of COVID-19 cases in countries in Latin America and the Caribbean are continually increasing. While the majority of COVID-19 infections in the region are reported in countries where economic inequality and population density fuel transmission, data from PAHO shows a concerning trend towards high transmission in border areas. In the Caribbean, where most islands have not reported significant increases in the number of COVID-19 cases, the director of the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, expressed concern about Haiti and the Dominican Republic. 
Both countries, which share an active border, continue to report a rise in new cases, particularly Haiti. Most border towns lack robust health infrastructure and service quality and access are often low. Due to limited hospital facilities, they often rely on labs of limited capacity and small clinics that serve communities in vast catchment areas. The COVID-19 pandemic accentuates these vulnerabilities and the increase of transmission in these areas is cause for serious concern and immediate action. To contain the spread of COVID-19 and to protect migrants and other vulnerable populations on the border, countries must work together to strengthen the health response within their territories and across frontiers. The director reaffirmed PAHO's support in addressing the spread of COVID-19 in border areas by establishing a local presence and boosting the capacity of local health authorities. We are also providing a vast array of supplies, such as PPEs, medicines, ventilators, and other medical equipment to ensure local communities and migrants who become ill because of COVID-19 receive proper care. All of this is part of our mandate and ultimately exactly what we were set up to do. In the Americas, the COVID-19 pandemic is a regional problem, not merely a country problem. Our ability to work together will determine how quickly we contain this deadly virus and put a stop to the suffering and loss it causes. The director assured that PAHO will continue to work closely with member states, UN agencies, and humanitarian organizations on the COVID-19 response throughout the region. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. Coronavirus? I am worried, Gasa. It's only old people dying from that. Hold up. Being young does not mean being safe. Yes, it's true that the elderly are at higher risk, but anyone can get the virus. The effect is even worse if you have a chronic condition like hypertension, heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes, or weakness in your immune system. If you are living with these conditions, be extra careful. Wash your hands with soap and water. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol when hand washing is not possible. Avoid touching your face. Take steps to boost your immunity through proper nutrition, exercise, rest, and take your medication as prescribed. Limit being around people who have flu symptoms, even close family members. Our health is in our hands. Together, through simple actions, we can stop the spread of coronavirus. This message was brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Monsieur Ta, Janelle, Monsieur, Madame, the Department of Universal Responsibility for Information and Government, CLC, GIS, and Television National, PIA, NTN, Capositu, Nouvelle, and Coyol. Presato, Primus Hutchinson. Commission de Cannabis, CLC, ça c'est un groupe qui est responsable pour établir la meilleure façon que la marijuana peut trouver légalisé en PIA. Tes jeunes et puis même cabinet lundi le 15 juin 2020, quand tu présenté le même cabinet, il y a un rapport des analyses économiques concernant les régulations de l'industrie marijuana en pays. La commission a été trouvée établie en mois de juillet 2019 pour te réviser et faire des recommandations à ce loi et des régulations en service marijuana en pays de cette ci Ceci, on lundi a été en bas de GID. Ministre de la responsabilité pour le commerce, l'industrie, les affaires investissement et le développement, Honorable Bradley Felix. La présentation a commencé et puis il y a une petite parole de Greg Lack, qui est responsable du comité de la M. Michael Gordon. Ce représentatif du comité a sorti un bureau à Tony General, l'Invest saint Lucia, ministère des Affaires et Commerce, ministère des Affaires et Égalité, comité marijuana, chef opposition PIA, 
Conseil national de jeunesse, Conseil l'équité cette fois-ci et Conseil ayonol pour avancement raster. Présentation comité a été très accompli, ni pour réformation et aussi contre réformation. Pour réviser la situation cette fois-ci, présentement, l'autre façon qui modèle des régulations, assessment économique, analysation des bénéfices et assessment économique en grande quantité de productivité. Ministre des Affaires Transformation et Développement Économique, Honorable Kai Joseph, déclare qu'il n'y a pas qu'à quoi il y a un service qui est tellement difficile que le public a une grande quantité de difficultés pour le service DigiGov à le département de service public gouvernement. Selon le ministre du Développement Économique, il y a un peu de monde qui a servi Internet pour acheter des marchandises dans notre pays. Il dit que le public a commandé la commission à titre de technologie et à l'aide de notre nécessité. Moun ka ka gen commission yo yo marchandises yo besoin en l'Amérique yo même ka acheté from ici a yo ka acheté l'Amérique yo ka payé pour les services crédit card yo so c'est un système même manière nous ka mettre pour divers services dat gouvernement ka offre nous ka demander public là pour copo avec nous because rien neuf qui juste commencer la ka ni yon de ti ti um chez ou kay jwenn ki bouzwen wanje mais c'est pour ça nous pou ka fè go désordre sou sa pou a brezan ça nou ka fè c'est nou ka test système la so le système la am commissaire na assisté di pli bon nè ay ka vini an li 15 mois sa plateforme la ka y ouvè ek moun ka y sa kòmanse et c'est ek nou ka y gade pitèt pou an lòt de simen ki manye y travay ek a sou manye y travay Den nou kay launch whole program lek nou kay di tout moun ok ou sa le a sou platform la abrezan ek ou sa fe business ou le y vini pou lisans ek di fe wan pa kon nou ka desan an chak mwa ou kay jwen di fe wan pa an servis la yo ke ou fe a kay vini a sou ling ek den moun kay sa ese pou jwen servis la yo bouzwen from la kay yo. Le résultat de test de maladie de corona qui s'est laissé vous suivre le 16 juin a montré que ces cas de ont sorti négatif. Déjà, en total, il y a 1447 tests qui ont conduit avec les mois qui ont enregistré seulement 19 de ans. 18 en ces cas-là, il y a eu des tests qui ont trouvé des guérisons. Le dernier cas de maladie de corona, c'était le 4e en mois de juin 2002, qui a placé le pays en dégoué du 13e jour qui a déjà conduit à un sorti négatif. Le département de santé a demandé au public pour continuer, pour vivre et fonctionner bien en réalité de l'environnement maladie de corona, pour continuer à protéger la santé et à agendouer la bonne vie, parce que ça a nécessité et pourtant ça a à la vie de nous toutes. Il y a une plus meilleure façon pour que nous nous en bonne santé et pour empêcher nous de tomber malades, c'est pour adopter l'habitude des actions immédiatement qui va augmenter les de contribution en effort national pour abattre la maladie de Corona. Nous, comme une nation, ça fait tout ça, qui engagé dans l'activité physique tous les jours, manger plus de fruits avec les gym, boire plus de l'eau, pour un garde de trois casse-mains et de chagrin pour résister à la tentation pour fumer et servir l'alcool. C'est bon là, petit sala, qui a aidé pour bâtir un système encore nous, qui a forcé et qui a improuvé l'habilité nous pour abattre pas seulement la maladie corona, mais aussi plusieurs autres maladies. Le département de santé a conseillé pour chercher et guider, et bien visiter le Wellness Center comme nous, et conseiller le docteur, c'est l'année de pièce de changement en manière de santé. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là, messieurs et dames. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore. Si vous conservez la vie, je vous remercie pour l'autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez présent? Ça, c'est le moins vieux pour vous tous. Je vous remercie. Merci, Appel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell. Thank you.